Adventurers in Audio Land, welcome to Point Noir, home of the Point Noir podcast. My name is Jerry the Third, aka Kimono Jack, and you are joining us here today at the Point for session number nine. We're super excited to get close to double digits, session 10 coming up, but first we just wanted to thank everybody again for all their comments, their reviews, all the activity on social media. It's been super cool, and we have some cool announcements as well to share once we do hit session 10, which is coming up, y'all. So, in the meanwhile, if you enjoy one of our episodes or enjoy today's episode, which I know you will, make sure to share it with somebody who would love the podcast as well. We'd really appreciate it. Without further ado, let's get into introducing today's special guest. Joining us today on The Point, we have none other than Mr. Kyle Speed. Make sure to follow Kyle on Instagram at I, the letter, Kyle Speed, spelled just the way it sounds, to keep up with his future adventures and his current activities. We first met as teammates competing for the men's track and field team for the University of South Carolina, hashtag go Cox, and since then, it's been apparent that we also have adventuring in common. Kyle shares his perspective and experience traveling and living in New Zealand for two years, and he also gives some great practical tips for how one can get started in their own backyard. I love the variation of perspective and insight that he shares with us on this episode, and I think you will too. So sit back. Grab a cool, refreshing beverage, and we're going to jump into the session. Kyle, thanks for joining us today at The Point. How you doing, bro? Good. How are you doing, brother? Dude, I'm awesome. And you're coming in crystal clear. I'm pumped. I'm already excited that you're on the show, but I'm glad when the Anchor app works well. So uh, how are you doing, bro? How's your week been? It's been cool? <laughs> My week's been quite uh, busy. Yeah. You know, <laughs> running around like a chicken with my head cut off, but we're going to get but surviving, you know? I know you out here hustling, man. We tried to link up earlier in the week and had to reschedule a couple of times, but I'm glad we could find some time to uh, to get you on the show, bro. Yeah, I apologize about that. You know, wires yeah. crossed a little bit, but hey, man, glad we to today. Have many, some time to talk. As many repeats as we need, dude. So I'm excited. Uh, and for those of you who probably definitely don't know, Kyle and I first met. Uh, at the University of South Carolina, we were both on the track and field team. And one of the cool things was after uh, not being teammates or in college together, I could follow his journey through social media. And I noticed that he had a very similar travel path to mine. And it's always encouraging to see others kind of take that risk and step out. So that's one of the reasons I asked him to be on the show. So if you wouldn't mind, Kyle, could you kind of tell us a little bit about you, how you grew up, what got you into traveling? Yeah, um, just a little bit about me, I guess. A backstory, like a little brief backstory. I grew up in like the suburbs of Atlanta. Um, I was in, you know, I don't know, if, I know a lot of black people may know it, but uh, organization called Jack and Jill of America. Mm-hmm. I grew up in that organization, going through that type of stuff. You know, that's kind of a little bit about my environment. Yeah. And then just ended up at South Carolina running track for a year or so. And then after college, you just kind of, you know, was getting a feel of what what to do and what not to do. And, you know, the job market was still what it was, you know, was still recovering, wasn't all that great. So I had a few options and, you know, eventually just packed the bag and was, you know, so yeah. Yeah, you packed the bag and didn't really look back. Now, around what year was this, just so people can kind of have a point of reference because 20 2008 was tough 2009 was really tough but you were graduating in what year again i graduated around i graduated in 2013 i left pro, let's see how old was i, I was 24 maybe 25 so maybe i left in like 2014 2015 okay I think it was 2015 I okay. left. Yeah. Wow. So the wave of the uh, of the recession really carried out for those years. So you were kind of, you said you mentioned you were looking at your situation. What were some things that were playing into the decision to just 
pack a bag. That's a, that is a move, my friend. Yeah, I mean, it was one of those things where I, I looked at it and I was like, I see everyone working hospital jobs, bartending, doing all that stuff. I thought I could do, I could either do that here or I could do that traveling. And, you know, a lot of us, we all get all these credit cards and all this stuff and try to put all this stuff on debt to fill our apartments with all this stuff. And yeah, I looked at it kind of a different way. I didn't really want all the stuff. Like my dream isn't a nice little white picket fence and house. My dream is to live on every continent of this planet wow. for at least a year. Wow. I'm getting there, you know, Antarctic, Antarctica might be a little bit hard. It's kind of cold, you know, and yeah, but we'll figure it out. Or there's a will, there's a way. And the cool thing is with, uh, the internet and YouTube and, and blogs and the way story can be shared. There's someone who's probably done it. And you're a smart guy. You could become a, a researcher for a year. I, I believe in you. That's I didn't know that was your dream, dude. That's really inspirational. That's awesome. When you say someone's done it, I look. That's pro, that's a lot of the way I look at life. I have these conversations with a few of my people. I work a few of the people I work with, and I say to them, I go, "Life is really simple." There's a blueprint to it. Everyone's done everything you want to do in life. Someone's done it. Like that's the way I looked at traveling. Like I said to myself, I want. It. What do I want to do? I want to. I want to travel the world. I don't really want to be here. So how do I do it? Like and that's the first page of my journal. My journal says, "How can you do it?" It doesn't say anything else. It's just one word, one sentence, one question of how can it be done. And because everyone's done something, there's a blueprint. You just got to be willing to look for it. And once you follow it, you got to be willing to make it your own. Like it goes only so far and then it's up to you to take it that much farther. So yeah, I agree with you. I agree with your statement. Exactly. If there's, there's always uh, someone 100%, that's done it. And that's yeah. a great perspective to have. Uh, having a journal, I still have my journal from heading out to Paris. I don't look at it much, but I knew how important it was to mapping that journey out for me. And, you know, again, following kind of somebody else's footprints. Uh, that's that's inspirational, bro. So before this trip, had you uh, experienced travel much? Did you get a chance to travel even domestically growing up? Yeah, I traveled a good bit domestically growing up, like, you know, the Caribbean, the Caribbean islands area, okay. Mexico. And then you know, it's a lot of the East Coast, up and down the East Coast, a good bit. Like, I've done a good bit of the U.S. Haven't done most of the Midwest, but you know, I have a, I have two giant maps. I have two, you know, those old school yeah. foldable paper maps. Well, I, oh, wow. I like to collect those. So I not, so I not only have a giant, just old like. I guess canvas style map on my wall. I then I also have just regular paper foldable maps. And right now the two maps I'm focusing on, I guess, is I have a map of Florida, which is which is the state I'm okay. currently living in. And then I also have okay. a map of the US. The map of the US is really simple. I have like seven or eight things circled and they're all the natural okay. world heritage sites. Yeah. In the United States, so they're not the man like no man made ones. Everything I do, I like to do like nature. I kind of like to stick away okay. from a lot of man made things because I feel like we mm -hmm. we get enough of that in the world. Like I feel like in order to survive in this world, you have to be plugged into technology and be able to understand it. But you also have to be able to remove yourself from it, and you have you can't have like a mixture of it. Like when you remove yourself from it, you need to remove yourself from all things, man. And you just need to get back into nature and enjoy it and things like that. So my destinations I put on maps are nature or hiking or trails like that. Things that just get me out of my modern everyday mindset of I live in a city. So I'm constantly surrounded by the hustle and bustle of the city. But if I can escape for those, for that day or for that weekend, it just makes it better. And that's what I loved about traveling was that I lived in a place in New Zealand where I could go bushwalking all the time. Like I, I bushwalk. Their bushwalking okay. is essentially Thank you hiking. For the definition. I could bushwalk. I was like, bush work. 
<laughs> Bushwalking is hiking. So it's like, it's, it's basically what they call trail hiking. It's the same thing. It's just, okay. they call it bushwalking over there. Sorry. So like you're walking, so it's like you're walking, you're walking the bush. Like I'm sitting there walking the bush. Okay. Like, yeah, you're bushwalking. But, and so you went hiking a lot there and I could just walk through trails and then end up at work. Like, and that was cool about New Zealand. Like it was surrounded by mountains, but it also was surrounded by water and like, it was a cities mixed in between the mountains. So like you could, you had to walk through trails and yeah. And I guess that's what I also like about coming home and being back around Florida is that I can travel around the state of Florida that same way too, because Florida has more parks than any other state wow. in the country. And like, it has all these trails and there's like what, seven state trails of Florida that are strictly designed for hiking and biking and even riding horses on them. So like travel doesn't have to go, you don't have to go across the world to travel. Like, yeah, I've done it. And that's what I felt I needed to do. But you can also travel like within your state. You just need to be willing. And that's why I grab maps because maps give you that real like feel and it shows you it allows you to look at it from a perspective differently than just a, on a mm -hmm. screen 100 you know what i mean and on this show i promote domestic travel as much as international travel we have a couple of guests that kind of feature on domestic travel i think that's a that's a great way to put it by getting in touch and kind of disconnecting not for the sake of hey like you said beautifully not that i don't need technology but hey here's some different perspective i can gain without it and having a physical map there there is something special there having a piece of paper in your hand uh my first few weeks in paris i didn't have a phone so i would go to like the kinkos and print out some google maps and it's, it's almost like a, a totally different way of engaging your mind into the experience it's really cool I, I can relate to you on that phone. I I can go in my closet and pull out the old, all the old, the like brick phone I had in New Zealand. Like I'm just getting yeah. back into technology. I had one of the, you know, like those original brick, mm -hmm. like Nokia phones, like that had like that had the yep. old game Snake on it. I had one of those phones for two years. And yeah, so and had very and didn't have a laptop that really worked. So I had to go to the library to the public library in order to ever use a computer yeah. or anything like that. So I, I kind of had to take a step back yeah. and it was kind of cool. But like, I don't actually like for those two years, I don't actually regret not really being connected to technology. It allowed me time to think and like, you know, just you, you realize what you don't really need as much. Like I was right. still connected to people, like people still talk to me all the time, but I just, and I still posted on social media and things like that. I just didn't do it constantly. I was more, I guess, aware of my surroundings because I wasn't constantly tuned in or needing to update to Instagram or whatever. I realized I could update the Instagram at night when I'm at home. Like it's not going to, it's just because I'm not there. Not, people aren't seeing what I'm doing right at that moment. It's not the 100%. end of the world. You know and, I mean? you know, getting that level of engagement is something that comes along with spending time in trails and traveling abroad where you don't have access to the quote unquote grid uh, like everybody else does. So you kind of jumped into this. I was going to save it as a big kind of surprise, but you went to New Zealand. And one thing that kind of strikes a strong image in my mind is you bushwalking to work because I imagine the Shire but let's talk about that. How did you land in New Zealand um, and end up getting a job? Uh, talk to us through that experience. Oh, I mean, that's what I haven't been. So I know, well, I know it's ignorant. It's also funny. <laughs> well, 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 black people don't, black people don't die first in New Zealand movies. So oh, well, that makes you yes, feel any better. Absolutely. Let me go live my life. Yes. <laughs> And the whole, uh, no, uh, New Zealand was just kind of one of those things where, like, like one of my friends, where, where one of my, I just kind of had, 
he was taught he had done a study abroad and when he was in college in spain and we were just we we just met up all the time to have just Mm -hmm. lunch and just to talk about life and he just talked about wanting a desire wanting to go back to spain and to teach english over there and just live over there for a while and i was just and was just kind of like would you be down and i was like i'm a yes person so like and you i i live life through experiences like i i won't i i don't regret anything i've done in my life some things have been bad some things have been good but every decision has led me to where i am today and i can't i can't take back any of those lessons sure. or else i wouldn't be who i am i wouldn't have i wouldn't have gone as far as i've gone and so yeah like i mean we sat there and talked about life and just and he was like you want to go and i was like yeah why not and so i i read a lot and i i approach every i'm a yes person but i also approach it once i decide to do something i also make so sure this I this was an agreement to go to spain just to make right. sure i'm clear this you guys were originally talking about spain to teach english yeah this was okay. a, yeah this was an agreement to go to Spain. And like, I was like, all right, cool. And so then I started doing research and I was like, all right, I'm, I'm broke. I have no money. How the hell am I going to get to Spain? Like teaching once you get to Spain is easy. Okay. Okay. How how do you get there? And so I started reading a lot. And then I came across someone that basically gave a step-by-step guide on how to Hmm. get a visa to New Zealand. And I was like, oh, Okay, and it was free, so I was like, "Hmm, well, why not and just it really try it out for the fun of it?" Like, what's? Yeah, like it was like, and it, like it, it literally. She, she's like, "This is I had no money. This is how I, this is how I got money. This is how I paid for it. This is how I did it. This is step by step how I did it." And it was a philosophy that most okay. a lot of people may not agree with, but you know. It's a philosophy that I found very much agreeing with that she goes, we, we open, I had never, we open up credit cards for a lot of reasons. People put, people buy credit card, people put cars on credit, they put their house on credit, they put their clothes on credit, they do all these things to attain material possessions on credit, but why not put it, why not put a plane ticket to another country on a credit card? instead and go work in that country Mm. and just pay the credit card off yeah like you'd be doing normally and so it's exactly what i did i put a plane ticket the visa was free i put a plane ticket on a credit card and i knew exactly what i needed to do when i got to new zealand you know i picked new zealand because you know my friend ended up backing out of wanting to go to spain and like i had done a quiz like four or five months before that said what would be the perfect country for you and it said new zealand and then i just so happened and i just so happened to have a free visa in new zealand and i was like so i was at my sister's wedding talking to her pastor and and her pastor was like yeah i'm going to do missionary work in thailand for the next year or so and i was like well i have a visa in new zealand she's and her pastor was like why don't you go and i was just like i don't know she's like what's stopping you and i was like I don't know. And she was like, okay, then I was <laughs> Good like, talk. okay, then I'm going. And the next day, I, yeah. And the next day, and the next day I put, I put a plane, t- I put, I put my plane ticket on the credit card, my only credit card that I've ever had, never used before. The first time I've ever ran anything on a credit card in my life. I put, I put a plane ticket on a credit card and I booked it for the next week, sold everything else I had told my family on a Wednesday and I was gone to New Zealand and it was as simple as that. And I got there and within two days I knew I had, I knew when I got there, the basic things you need when you work in the U S you need a social security number, you need a phone number, you need a bank account number, you need a place to live. You know, I did all those things in New Zealand. I went and got a bank account. I went and opened up a bank account. I used the place I was staying at for Airbnb because I had booked there a month. So that counted as a residency okay. for right then and there. I used that for the bank. I got their version of a social security number. And then I got a phone number. 
And then I walked from bar to bar with my CV or what they call their res, they call right. resume CVs over there. I walked from bar to bar with my CV and two days later I had a job and I had that job for a year. And then I, when that visa ran out, I stayed for a little bit being a tourist. And then when cash ran low, I bought a new visa. I bought a plane ticket and I bought a new visa for Australia and moved over to Australia. Wow. So let's, let's thing. back up and break that down a little bit because I think between the, the credit card, getting there, getting a job, getting established, there's, there's a little bit to unpack and having a very similar experience in France, except the key difference was I was a thousand percent illegal immigrant. Uh, one, <laughs> having a passport, having paperwork is, is critical. Your, your story wouldn't have happened with as much uh, governmental ease without having that free visa. Like that's critical, man. Shout out to you for doing things the right way and, and being official, you know, that, that's dope. I don't, well, I, I, I know mm -hmm. how Americans treat immigrants and I know other countries treat immigrants a whole lot better than they do here, but I, we're, you're still an immigrant. Like no matter what, no matter what, like when you go to a different country, when you go to the work, you're still an immigrant. Right. You're still starting on the bottom. But if you're going to start on the bottom, you might as well do it the right way. Like it's easier, it's easier to work with the system than work against the system. Like we all try to fight against the system, but at the end of the day, you know, there's that age old saying to, you can't, you can't beat them. You can't beat them unless you're all right, unless you're with them and part of them. Like it's as simple as that. Like you can't, you can't work. The system won't accept you unless you are part of the system. Like we speak of immigrants, speaking of like France and immigrants, you know, right now in the news, you have, you have the, you have an African immigrant who just scaled four stories and rescued a baby and was granted automatic citizenship. But story, but that story is one in a million. And they say it, and the news keeps constantly saying, they say he wouldn't have been granted this status if absolutely, he hadn't have done this. Right. And, and it's not because he wasn't a capable person, but it was just because yeah, absolutely. And those pat plays and because he was an immigrant are, are like, there for a reason, and, you know. Um, and sometimes it's more of a deterrent than trying to find qualified members to join the society. But I think it's commendable. And one awesome that it's a free visa with uh, you know being an American. Like definitely shout out to you for that. It's no longer free, I don't think. But I'm not sure. I haven't applied in two three years so could still be okay. free okay i don't so know the visa thing definitely wants to point that out but at the time it was free so that was smart of you to take advantage of that and then mm -hmm. and now even even now it'd still only be like 250 300 okay. american dollars and for a visa so. that's, that is not bad at all uh and at all the other thing i wanted to uh mention was the idea of using a credit card going into debt for for travel experience too. And you had plans to pay it off. So I think in some ways we can call it investing. And there's a really great. Mm -hmm. Mine was less like it was less. I looked at it less as going into debt and more as knowing that I was going there to work for a job and that I wasn't like I was moving to a new. It was basically me moving to a new city. Like I have like if some if you get a new job, say say you live in the US and I'm living here in Jacksonville and I'm working for what mm -hmm. I don't know, what Fidelity and a financial company and they decide to relocate me to Austin. They give me a five thousand dollar relocation fee, right? To help pay for my relocation because it's going to because moving to a new city isn't cheap. Like you're going, it's going to be right. expense to move to a new city. And there's no difference than me using, and, there, and I look at it no different than me moving to Wellington, New Zealand. It, I just moved to a new city and I just was going to incur expenses moving to a new city. One of those expenses was a plane ticket. The other expenses were just getting set up for life. But it, I didn't spend. I didn't spend an absorbent amount of money to get set up. Like I, I spent a, a average amount of money for moving to a new city. 
Like, and that's all the way I look at it is, is I just right. moved to a new city. And I guess it's a simple way to look at life is like, I, I can just, I have no worries about just packing a bag and going and moving to a new city and having to start over. And yeah, it's a lonely life sometimes. And I don't, I don't say it's not for everyone. Like, because but I know who my friends are. I have friends all over the world. I have friends here. I have some of the, I came home to be in my best friend's wedding and I haven't left yet because I, because I have to start over again, but it was worth it. Like I wouldn't have had to start over if I didn't come home, but I had to spend all my cash to come home and to be in my best friend's wedding. But things like that are worth it. And having to start over doesn't phase me again. Like it doesn't worry me that I have to save up again to go travel again or to live in another country or that my plans had to change. I know that's not for everybody. Like that's not an easy way to live, whether you're black, white, whatever it like, especially being a black man, I know it's not a normal thing for people to do or for a black man just to constantly be like, Oh, I'm ready to pack up and go. And like, I've had, I've had a female friend that's literally scared to death when like she, we, we date and we hang out and she says to me, she goes, and I go to her and she goes, Kyle, like, I really am not afraid of you leaving. And I go, why? And and I go, she goes, you've done it. You, you packed up a bag in a week and moved over to the other side of the world and didn't come (laughs) home for two years. She's like, (laughs) She's like, she's like, you, you're one of those people that you are a flight risk and it's, you're not a flight risk in a bad way. You're a flight risk in that you want to live, like I said before, you want to live life through experiences. And that's all I want is just to experience life and to be, to say that, not to say that I saw it in a photo or that I saw videos of it, but to say I truly did do that. Like, I, I I walked onto the tr- we met because I walked onto the track team. I didn't ever mean to be on the track team at South Carolina. Like that wasn't that was never a right. goal of mine. Come like yeah, I would think it would be cool to run track in college, but that would never have been like an absolute goal of mine. Like I I went because you know Trish. Mm-hmm. You probably remember Trish. She was a close friend of mine in high school, and she wanted to go. She wanted to walk onto the team. And she was a diehard Gamecock fan. She had always dreamed of running track for South Carolina. Like, that was her dream. And so she was like, Kyle, come, like, Kyle, come to the meetings with me. I'm scared right. to go to the meetings by myself. Right. And I just never left. It was as simple as that. Like, I, and I, I loved every minute of it. But I also, after a year, realized this isn't what I signed up for. Like, this isn't what I wanted to do. Like, but it was an experience that I had and it was an experience that I felt I needed to have. Like running with training with Johnny Dutch will never be, will be something never. I'll never forget. Like, or, do, or train or doing, um, or that one random pole vaulter training or practice hey. I did with you guys. Like that level, like, Though, like those two things are things I'll never forget in my life. Like that's ridiculous. Like, like how many people can say they train with some of the best athletes in the world? Like, and that's not an exaggeration. Like, that's just no, the flat out facts. facts of it. Like, and I and yeah, I I couldn't hack it for more than a year, but that was just because that's not what because. I saw the dedication it took to be, to be those people, to be Johnny Dutch and to be Natasha Hastings and those people of the world. And yeah, I wasn't ready that I, w- I didn't want to be that. Like, like that's a mindset that very few people can have and very few people can have the dedication and will set and power to do those things. And like, I don't know. But I'm glad I had the experience. I'm glad to say I, I, I could, I could hang. I wasn't the greatest, but I'm glad to say I could hang. Right. And like, it spoke to you, you know what I mean? In a different way that wasn't necessarily about performance, even though you did progress. It was about experience, and you fulfilled that. And I think 
just off of the amount that you've had to share about the money you did put down. It, it is an investment. One of my favorite uh, sayings about travel is travel is the only thing you'll spend money on and get richer. You walked away with so many experiences, so many perspectives. And I could see that as you were traveling, which is why I knew you had so much to share on the show. Um, I mean, it, it was smart. You knew you were going to pay it off. You didn't just spend money on an exorbitant vacation, uh, you know, to come back and be like, oh, crap, what do I do now? Uh, you really you really lined yourself up and and made it work. It's dope. I mean, my I mean, I just I just want to live, you know, it's really cliche, but I yeah. really just want to live my truth. Like I just I can't I can't justify my way of living for anybody else and I can't tell you that my way of living is right. Like I can't say that you should go against the grain and you should fight outside the system. Like I've participated in the system, but I've also been on the fringe or the edge of the system for most of my life. Like I don't, I fit in just enough that Mm -hmm. I have a say, but I'm very much myself. And I can't say that my way is the right way. I just know that, what's worked for me to get me to this point is being true to myself and not worrying about the nose or, or what's going that, what, what could happen. Like I've failed. I've failed at a lot of Mm -hmm. things in my life. I've, I've traveled. I ended up traveling because I couldn't, because I failed in the job market. I couldn't find a job in my field. And to me, I, I don't think of it as a night ne- when I, when I, when people, when we use the word failure, it's usually a negative mm-hmm. condensation. And to me, it's not a negative word. Like to me, I don't look at failure as something that's negative. Like I failed in the job market, but I was also blessed enough to be, it was also the sign to me that I should led me to go right. travel the world. And so did I really fail or was it, or was it the sign or was it just my path in life being guided in a different right. direction? Was it the universe telling me that I'm not meant to go sit in an office doing a nine to five yeah. job every day? And, and that's, and so maybe, and so me, it wasn't failure, it wasn't like I wasn't failing because I wasn't good enough at something. I was failing because the universe was telling me this isn't what I'm meant to do. That's that's awfully introspective of you, especially around. I remember when I was thinking at 24, 25, it was book a one way ticket. But still having so much to, to, to speak on it, I think is going to add a lot of value and perspective into the mindset of somebody like yourself, like myself, we're very similar in a lot of ways on how we view traveling and and self-discovery. And I definitely want to jump into New Zealand and some of this non-failure, which which I think is a nice way to put it. Uh, It's a great way to put it. What kind of perspectives did your experiences overseas bring to you that that maybe revealed new things, new, new truths for you in your path? I guess when you just say book a one way, I agree. Like you, you do just need to book a one way ticket. And like when you, there's that mindset of when you book, when you book a return flight, it gives you an out. Like it gives you that chance to say, I, I have a backup plan. If I fit, if I don't succeed, I have a backup plan. And I guess my truth going over there was, I didn't have any backup plans. Like there wasn't what if there wasn't a, what happens tomorrow or what are you doing or what do you, what's, what are you doing with your life? Like it was, this was what I was doing with my life. Like people, people used to ask me, they used to be like, Kyle, it's, what are you doing with your life? And I go, you see it. This is like, you look (laughs) at it. Ta-da. I, I, (laughs) I'm standing up. I'm I'm an African American male. Black. I'm a black male standing on the other side of the world in front of you. It doesn't matter what the fuck right. I'm doing. I'm standing in front of you right now, 
and I'm living here on the other mm. side of the world. This is what I'm doing. There's no backup plan. There's no, I don't have, I don't have backup plans in my life. Like I am, what I'm doing in my life is what I'm doing. And if I fail at it, well, fuck, like I fail at it and I have to figure out something else. Like, like yeah. I, it sucks. Like, but you know, I don't plan on failing. I don't plan on not succeeding a lot in my life. Like, and I don't have that mindset of that. I won't, I won't make something out of my life because I've been given a lot and I have a lot to give back because I've been given so much. And so I have that drive to keep going because I have a lot of people yeah. to repay and I have a lot of good I have to do before I'm settled in this world. But I have to see the whole world in order for me to feel that I can give the most to the world. Does that it make does. sense? And I, I really want to point out and, and uh, compliment isn't the word that's not, uh, you know, I just want to say, I appreciate the, the mix between optimism. It is, doing living life in this way and I can directly relate to it takes a lot of optimism it also takes a lot of work ethic and grit which you, you've spoken to uh, and then also having the humility and the gratitude on top of that dude that's to me that's those are all essential parts of the winning formula and and you've got it bro you've got it it's not but it's it, it's not about winning it's just about being a decent human. And me and my roommate had this debate the other day. Hey everybody, Kimono Jack back here again. No need for alarm, just a quick pause for the cause and a great opportunity to refill that refreshing beverage that I know you've been sipping on. So while you're headed back to the kitchen, or to the cabinet, just wanted to let you all know that if you are in the travel or entrepreneurship space and are in need of a keynote speaker for your upcoming event, a guest for your own podcast, or if you want to create your own broadcast via podcasting, hit me up, drop me a line, kimonojack at pointnoirshow.com. Would love to connect with you over a quick call, hear what the needs are for your upcoming event, or hear about this new movement that you've been thinking about and trying to create. Listen, 2019 is going to be another big year for podcasting. And there's opportunity for everybody to succeed, but there are plenty of places to get hung up on because it is its own discipline, its own skill. And I would just love to help you get unstuck wherever you're at on the journey and share with you some of the approaches I've taken to bring the show to the level of success that it currently has today and will continue to see. So Kimono Jack at PointNoirShow.com, K-I-M-O-N-O-J-A-C-K, at pointnoirshow.com would love to hear from you and by this point i'm guessing you're either still pouring or you've already overflowed that glass so sorry for not saying stop but um your couch cushion's getting cold and the show is ready for you so if you're ready here we go back into the session so kyle you were sharing that you were in a discussion with your roommate and in terms of just the quality of person that you are, that your roommate was was complimenting you and said that you are rare and few in the way that you operate. I guess, no, I guess my roommate wasn't really paying a compliment more. My roommate is a skeptic of a, of how the world works. He, he sees it, he understands it, but he also just kind of, has a negative view of it, I guess. Mm -hmm. And he just says, why, why do something want, why, why benefit others when no, when others aren't trying to benefit you? Gotcha. And, and I have, and I feel like that's a bad mindset to have. Like it's, I don't know, like, yeah, we are. This world is survival of the fittest. There's no, there's no denying the history that history has been written by the victors, the people who have survived. It's the reason why Chinese history is so long is because they're survive. They've survived continuously throughout history, mm -hmm. and 
it's the re- it's just how it works. It is survival of the fittest. That's how life is. But we also we also need to understand that yeah, it's survival of the fittest. But if you have weak members of your society, your society won't ever thrive because those weak members will continue to bring it down. So what do you do? You help out those people. You help them achieve success. You help you help them benefit society to the greater good instead of being a drain on society. You help pe- you give back to society. You mm-hmm. give charities. You make sure people have opportunities that you had because the reason why I'm here today, the reason why my roommate's here today, the reason why you're probably here today is because we've been afforded opportunities that most of the world has never been given. And we as Americans, we grow up in this bubble, in this tight little bubble, and I'm not excluded from this. I'm right there. I grew up in one of the biggest bubbles on the planet. Like, I grew up in the Alpharetta suburban Milton Atlanta bubble. Like if anyone knows anything about the Atlanta rich bubble, like that bubble is very, very tight and you don't, you have no reality. What is the outside world until you get out of it? And then you're like, wow, the world really is like this. Hmm. And it's a culture shock. Yeah. But, and America is one big bubble. And we don't realize that we have, so much and we 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 need to realize we need to like realize that it's not there it's not it's not like going to be there forever and it needs to be given back and that if in order for it to continue we have to make sure we continue educating everyone we can't exclude people because when people feel excluded they 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 start to be a drain on society and we can't have that like, and it's just sad because a lot of people don't want to get back to the world. They don't think, they think, oh, I'm better than everyone else. And you're not better than everyone else. Yeah, you might be smarter than them, but doesn't mean you're better than them. Like, it's a, it, it, just because you're a rocket science, it doesn't make you a great person. Like, right. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, like, just because, just because you can cure cancer doesn't mean you're not a shitty person at the end of the day. Like, like. I, there's plenty of people sitting in jails that have done great things, but they've also done horrible things in their life too. Like the good doesn't outweigh the bad. The bad doesn't outweigh the good. Like it is what it is. Hmm. So on, on that note, because I always like to ask my guests what sort of advice uh, to give, I'm going to preface this because I understand the, some of the, the values that I expound. I'm very much the one way ticket, throw it on a bag and, However, I think that DNA in maybe who we are spiritually might be tuned to that lifestyle. And I, I really come to accept that it's not for everybody. So with all of the experiences you've had, uh, even traveling through New Zealand, Australia domestically and traveling through the States domestically, what would be the most practical advice you would be able to give for someone who'd like to uh, travel, explore, and, and kind of adventure through the world? What would be a, a, a practical starting point for them? Go go to your local REI, go to your local bookstore or wherever, and go buy a paper map, like I said mm-hmm. earlier. Literally, just go buy a paper map of your state, of your city. They'll have some local map. Go buy a map of the of the country you're living in at the current time, whatever. And then just circle some spots on the map and just go. Really that simple. Wow. Like life, like we, we don't need much. Go hiking, go fishing, you know, stretch in the morning <laughs> so your body doesn't get so your body doesn't get right. hurt. I'm not saying I'm not saying go do yoga, like uh yoga. You know, we, we're all craved on yoga. I'm just saying stretch. Just get up, stretch, hike, go walk, move around. Like, seriously. Yeah. Go catch some fish. Go learn, go learn to catch fish. Like, that is, that is the best. That is the best food supply we have, right? right? We're, ruining the, we're ruining the ocean, but that's the best food supply we have at the current. We are, we are, 
We are land animals on a water planet. You can never forget that. So why not use water as a source? But yeah, so I say go go buy a map. Go buy a map. I like it. I like it because it's practical and it, it's, it's achievable. Map isn't that expensive. Um, and I feel like a lot of adventurers are going to advise people to just go to kind of just light that fire. But you know what? Go with a map circle some spots and and make it work i love it and i say do a map like people go oh you're gonna have all these people go oh we have these on our you have maps on your phone you can just put these things in on your phone blah 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 well the scientific the scientific study has been proven for all these people out there that if you physically have something and you physically write it down you're more capable of remembering it and you actually more like want to do it because it's you've physically written it down and you've physically seen it versus just reading through it on your 100 percent, it engages so. more of your senses and uh, leads to better retention of the information that is that is actual factuals y'all y'all are getting so much today inspiration motivation some psychology worldviews yeah like, like that, that like we're not just i'm not just spitting off random bs to you like that's actual like facts <laughs> that's why i say go get a map and draw on a map because you're going to want to do it more. If you have a map, like I sit here and I have this map on my floor that I just constantly see. And I'm just like constantly like, all right, I want to go. I want to go versus I know it's on my phone, but I don't see it 24 seven on my phone. Like it's not there in front of me. hundred percent. Well, dude, I love that. And thanks for sharing your experience and, and great words of wisdom. I hope people really actually listen to this twice um, because there's there's a lot in that, and I'm sure some of this, uh, especially hearing it from somebody who's done it, uh, and at such an age, I think a lot that people can kind of break through and, and chew on a little bit. Uh, but I definitely want to hear about what you're up to next when it comes to your travels and adventures. What's the next destination for you? And do you have any projects or other activities you're involved in that you want to talk about on the show today? Um, what's next for me? Um. Very good question. I haven't really. I, my next goal is to buy a giant world map, pick a spot. I've done, let's see, I've done two out of three continents. I said Antarctica will be hard, so I'll figure that one out as the last. So I guess we'll do Asia or uh, South America next. I can probably teach in, I can teach English in both countries. Okay. Also, I advise people get an English language certification. Like, if if you can afford it, go get an English language teaching certification. Mm-hmm. It allows you to teach all over the world. Mm-hmm. And teaching English is the lingua franca of the of the world now. It used to be French. It is now English. So, do you have a? Do you know English? offhand, not to interrupt you, what the name of the certification is that you prefer? I, we can point people in that direction. So I. So I have the more expensive one, I guess, like you can get any type. So I have a CELTA. They have, so, they have something called, it is a Cambridge English language certification okay. and they deliver it through, you know, I got mine through a university mm-hmm. because I know that there's no question about whether or not I'll be recognized. I was actually in Australia when I did okay. mine. So when I got to Australia, I started, I applied for, I applied for this two month intensive course uh, get an English language certification in Australia at a at their university RMIT, okay. and I was accepted. And then I did two months there of essentially Monday through Friday, nine to five, like just drilling, training, teaching classes, all that wow. stuff. And it was like eight weeks. And then by the time the eight weeks is, they either give you a pass or they give you okay. a fail, like. A, as simple as that. Like they say you either pass your certification or you fail your certification. And in Australia, English language certification is big business. Yeah. Like it, it, yeah. And it's big business around the world if you can do it. And you can even do it online now. So Okay. Dope. So throwing more darts at a map, figuring it out. And then are there any projects that you're working on or in things we need to know about? And how can we find you? These are these are critical questions. The world needs to know, my friend. All right now I'm in I'm your local Jacksonville real estate agent and also aficionado on brunch and 
brewery spots, like just entertainment in general. I pre I sell basically the Jacksonville lifestyle. I live it. I try to live the lifestyle I sell. And so, yeah, I I work in the Jacksonville area. I help people find their houses. I love working with first time home buyers and finding their houses and things like that. It's just something I now have a passion for. I just, I like consulting with people on how I have a degree in finance. So I like people, we, your biggest investment in life is going to be a house. So I like helping people find that and making sure they living in the right area and the right mindset for them. So I do that. Um, You can find me at I Kyle speed. That's my Instagram. Just I like the letter Mm -hmm. I and then K Y L E S P E D speed. So I Kyle speed. And then my web Kyle speed.com. Could you say your website one more time? Is it I Kyle speed or Kyle speed? KyleSpeed.com. Perfect. Kyle Speed, SEC track and field runner. It was a fitting name. <laughs> yeah, you know, it puts so much fear in people, you know. It, <laughs> 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 the sarcasm at its finest. I hope people understand oh, that. Oh, man, dude, it was, it was all good times. Listen, that was, that was a, literally a hell of an experience. Um, you, but, know, um, you, you know, when the because they called me Milton instead of, uh, you know, Speed. Yeah. Dude, <laughs> listen, anybody who came out there in those blistering Carolina summers for the – man, it's not an easy life. But I'm glad we got to connect, like, and and meet. And you never know who you're going to meet along your path and where their paths are going to go and reconvene. So, dude, I'm I'm totally supportive of real estate. That's like whoop whoop on that and brunch and beer. So if y'all are looking to figure out where to brunch or where to beer or where to buy a home in Jacksonville, Florida, check out my guy, Kyle Speed. Um, dude, thank you so much for being on the show. I'm glad we finally got to make this work with minimal technical difficulties and uh, definitely appreciate everything you had to share with us today. No worries, brother. Appreciate what you're doing. Keep keep it up. I see you. I understand. I get it. Like, Thank you for having me. I really do appreciate you taking the time to talk with me. You know, I should like to share my story anytime I can. And I appreciate you just getting out there and sharing other people's stories because it's not like you don't have to put in your time to share other people's stories, but you're doing it. So I appreciate Man, that. Thank you, bro. It's always a privilege and pleasure to hear these things. And dude, thank you for, for your trust and confidence in me. So safe travels, wherever we end up, who knows, we'll probably end up catching a beer and, Thailand or oh Colombia, that's on my list. So we'll we'll look out for that. Well, well, whenever you pick a pick your next music destination wherever in the world, let me know and maybe I'll book a hey, flight and we'll meet hey, up there. You know, you know, I'm all over the the motherland. So when you're coming out there, let me know. <laughs> we'll do, brother. All right, man. We'll take do. care. All right, thank you. Anytime. Appreciate it. Peace. <laughs> You all have just been behind the mind of a true adventurer. What a treat. Thank you so much, Kyle, for sharing your story and experience with us and with so much authenticity. Make sure to follow him on Instagram at Kyle Speed. I know right now he's just getting his account up and running, but he promised me he's going to be putting up a bunch of pictures that he took in New Zealand. And you guys know New Zealand is beautiful. So check him out, follow him, see what he's up to. And if you're in the Jacksonville area, definitely hook up with them, learn something about real estate, brunch and beer. You can't lose with either one of those. For everybody else though, hit me up on Twitter and Instagram. Let me know what kind of old maps you guys are finding around town or what sort of local adventures you guys are planning. I think he gave some really practical advice and I myself will be finding the oldest, dustiest map I can in Dallas and uh, you know, seeing what's good. I hope you guys really enjoyed this session here at Point Noir. Until the next time, I'm Jerry the Third, signing off.